Hi, everybody. My name is Jennifer Mulholland, and this is Jeff Shuck. We are the co-leaders of Plenty, speaking to you today from HeartSpace, our retreat center in beautiful Park City, Utah, and Michigan City, Indiana, out of Jeff's home office. Um, yesterday, after getting off a couple of client calls, um, we were speaking, and this phrase came into my mind around the idea that your budget is bullshit. We all know it <laughs> and we're struggling and our clients are struggling to revise, to pivot, to plan for what they can't see during this time of crisis and this time of the great pause. And so we wanted to talk to you about something that we all know that as we're scrambling to um, revise our plans and change our budget, budgeting itself seems like, um, kind of a fruitless effort in the moment when we can't see what's coming. Yeah, when we do, we have a um, strategic retreat called Meridian. It's like a three month strategy process where we help organizations think through how they wanna be. And during that process, we do a little thought experiment. And the thought experiment goes like this. Pretend it's the end of the year, it's New Year's Eve and you're celebrating, you're looking back on the past year and you're thinking about the most important thing that happened. And maybe it was a huge tragedy or maybe it was a huge success story. Now go back to the beginning of that same year on January 1st. Did you know that that big important event was going to happen? Did you anticipate it? Did you plan for it? And when we ask this question, most of the time the leaders that we work with say no. Actually, the biggest thing that happened this year was I got a huge client out of the blue, or my dad was killed in a car accident completely unexpectedly, or I met someone and we got engaged in three months. You know, these things that happen that are really important to us often aren't part of the plan at all. So one of our um, metaphors for Lantern, our leadership retreat, is this idea that if you take the light and you put it, the lantern above your head, all you can really see that illuminates is right around you. We call that seeing what is, like really being present to what is right here, right now. We're, we're more equipped to see right here, but as conscious leaders, what we're not great at is predicting the future. Mm -hmm. And when we are being asked to come up with budgets that can predict what's gonna happen in 2020, predict what's going to happen in terms of projections and presumptions of the fall or even beyond, we, get, we start to walk on slippery ground. And the challenge is, as leaders, we know that it's almost like sticking your finger in the air and we can look at past data, but when that yeah. past data doesn't apply to a time like we're living in that's so unpredictable, so new, and so unknown, it's really difficult to rely on the, the um, facts to predict what will happen um, that will make our budgets stable and real. Yeah, and this has been a little, I think, frustrating for our clients to hear um, because we're helping them with models and, and we can make some pretty sophisticated models, but models are just models. <laughs> you know, they're just, it's like building Legos. Uh, on your desk and then assuming that's going to drive you to work like it's just a model it's just a representation and we're living through something right now that no one's ever lived through um, at least no one that's alive has lived through um, the new york times presented an analysis this past week of credit card spending records just showing like what has happened to consumer spending in the last couple of weeks and the charities in it Charitable giving was down like 50%, almost 50%. So we're well past the point of just, you know, saying, well, how much should I adjust my budget this next quarter? You know, should I put it 10% down or 15% down? It's kind of time to erase everything and start over again. And that doesn't mean that there aren't things that we can do as, as leaders, but we've seen, and maybe Jenny can speak to this, we've seen the cost that happens when leaders try to just unconsciously follow a budget that was written four or six months ago that now has no relevance to the world that we're living in. Yeah, the, the credibility of a model 
really depends on the credibility and the accuracy of the assumption we're putting into it. And we need to be questioning those assumptions and not running on past behavior and past assumptions that have worked that won't work now because the environment's changed, the landscape's changed, the market trends are changing, industries are dying, industries are going to recover, some may not come back. And so we're seeing this pressure for leaders that have to report to boards or report to other leaders in their organization with revised numbers that feels untrue. It feels like best guesstimates at, at its best. But what we're witnessing is the team that is responsible for delivering on those new projections don't buy it. And they can feel and sense that the budget is bullshit as much as a leader is trying to create it. And when that happens, what we start to create is the stress machine. We feed it. It, it, we feed anxiety, we feed sleepless nights, we feed worry, because there is no stable ground for which that budget, that goal, that number feels true. Because underneath it, it's unstable. Underneath it, those assumptions have not been validated. And so we start as leaders to put more pressure on our teams at a time when there's a lot of worry, anxiety, and stress. Um, occurring and we put it on ourselves so we just yeah. add more stress because we we can see that it's a guesstimate and it's it may not be true well and it's not just the stress it's that the the conscious leader you know you're in danger of eroding your own credibility right and there there's such a fine line part part of leadership is about having a vision sharing a vision creating a collective vision facilitating that with other people but there's a fine line we were saying yesterday between being a great captain and being Captain Ahab, right? Being someone who's relentlessly driving to a goal that no one else believes in or no one else um, understands why, why it's even being pursued. And that's going to be the delicate balance over the next three months or six months. Like, how do we as leaders have a vision that we can rally people around? but not under, undermine our own credibility in the process by, by putting something out there that everyone else is behind our back saying, wow, the old boss is crazy because we're never going to hit that number. And often our teams on the front lines, they're the ones dealing with customers and donors and shareholders and stakeholders and investors. And they know a lot more than the people in senior management what's actually happening. They're the ones getting the no's. They're the ones getting, hey, call me back next year. So, you know, there's, there's something about creating stress in our team. There's something also about undermining our own credibility if we don't slow down and say, okay, well, maybe we have to just start all over. And what can we control at this point? Yeah, and one thing we can control is how we model and how we um, behave in what we believe. That I love that point, Jeff, that you just made. Like our our the power of belief is what helps to mobilize teams, people in alignment for something greater than ourselves. And if we don't believe the budget, that is going to ripple out into. Uh, negative impact with the people that we're leaving, leading. And so really sitting back and saying, okay, what can I control? What do I believe? Um, what do I know to be true now? And what can I see? And if we get uncomfortable the further out because we can't see in the dark, then maybe one of the things we can control is the timeline, is the commitment to when we will know actual numbers or actual projections, or actual goals. We need to buy time, if you will, to learn more from our community, to learn more from our team, to ask what they're seeing from donors, or their peers, or their constituents, whatever field of organization you're in. So one of the things that we can absolutely control is seeing what we can see right now, Checking, do we believe and buy it to be true? Um, 
looking at the cost side and not necessarily the revenue side as a success metric. Like what are the fixed costs that cannot be um, modified? And maybe what could be trimmed? What could be postponed? What spend do we not need to make at this moment to buy more time? Yeah, I want I want to underscore that point because right now, like anything on the revenue side, your sales, your donations seems really hard to model. Um, the cost side is always so much more predictable. And by the way, if you're a nonprofit, cutting costs also helps improve your net. So usually we are giving people the advice of investing and not overly doing cost cutting. In this case, we're just saying, be careful what you cut, but that's something that you can control. It's a lot more reliable. And to pair it with the advice Jen was just giving about timing, we were on with a client yesterday who was saying essentially, hey, my ad agency is really, um, is really encouraging me to go ahead and commit right now to the next six months. And we kind of talked through it and said, what do you gain by starting now that, that you can't still have if you started a month from now? In other words, you lose nothing by delaying. You just get more information and we control a month of costs there. So we kind of win on two fronts. Um, that doesn't mean you can cut every cost because there's, there's in most organizations, people are the highest cost and cutting people can have a real long-term negative effect. But what can you delay and what can you just wait on as you're trying to get more information to make the decision you need to make? The other thing that you control is, is your consideration of your success metrics and going beyond revenue um, is a critical thought experiment. What matters to your organization? What is the impact you want to create? Why do you want to create it? And focus on people, people within your company, within your team, within your foundation, within your movement, and the people that you serve. So if you're really focusing on the humanity and the human impact, whether it's in the cancer space, whether it's in, in cleaning up the environment, whether it's helping to bring resources to healthcare providers right now at the t during this time of the COVID crisis, whatever the cause is, people often are at the center and at the heart of why you're doing what you're doing. So what success metrics could you wrap around helping people connect, helping people heal, helping people slow down, helping people get the resources and get the basic needs that they need to during this time of transition? But going beyond the revenue goal and really reevaluating your success metrics is something conscious leaders have within their control to look at right now. Yeah, and inherent in all of that is, is I think you can hear it under what Jen is saying, is lead with service. You know, lead with the question, how can we help right now? And you've probably already seen it. You're seeing news stories about distilleries who are making hand sanitizer because they can't distribute their whiskey or stories like that are coming to the top of our consciousness because they're inspiring. And those don't start with saying like, what can we get out of it? They start by saying, well, everyone's hurting and how can we help? And really all of this comes down to playing the long game, you know, being willing to say, okay, the thing is that we were going to use to measure our success over the next quarter or two have totally gone out the window, but we want to be an organization, a team. I want to be a leader who's relevant five years from now, 10 years from now. But what does that look like, right? And it's interesting that some of the government protections that are coming, like the payroll protection program Jen and I were just talking about, is actually designed to help you play the long game a little bit, right? It's designed to help you keep your team in place. It's designed to help you keep your facility in place, to help you pay your mortgage, because the economists know like that's the infrastructure that actually matters. That revenue goal may have to go out the window, but if we gut our whole team and our whole culture in the process of trying to chase after it, then we don't have anything left.
Yes, and and I would say last but not least, there are many other things we can control as conscious <laughs> leaders. I think Jeff and I want to um, emphasize one last point: is this idea of listening, listening to not only how you can serve your constituents and your community, as Jeff just so eloquently shared, but listening to your team, listening to your employees, listening to your staff, listening to yourself. Like You know what is true for you. And this time of uncharted territory is where conscious leaders rise. We have to rise in our knowing in, in this field of the unknown and navigating what we can't see. What we know to be true is what is true for ourselves. And what informs that is what we can see by being awake and aware and observing the signs, observing the trends, listening to what people are saying over and over, listening to the morale with the people that we're leading. How are they doing in their home environments? Are they stressed out? Is it working for them? What needs to change? But really listening to your knowing and going with it because that is the compass for conscious leaders. And that's what be, is being invited and asked for us as we're revising budgets and as we're leading teams and people and organizations and events through an uncharted time. Um, that knowing is gonna be most critical and you know what's true for you. So yeah. we encourage you to follow it. We encourage you to listen to it. I love that point, like, you know, your budget's full of crap. Your strategic plan has gone out the window. That doesn't mean you have to be full of crap, <laughs> you know? And more than ever, we need to be real and we need to be here and we need to be willing to say, well, let's try something else. So thanks for listening. We hope it helps. We're here to help if you need help. And um, thanks for the work you do to create a better world. Thank you. Have a great day.